Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about something that's purely HR. Uh, there's no Excel uh, evolved for this class. So if you're looking for some Excel tip, uh, you can skip this um, class. But then if you are in HR or you're interested in learning more about the HR concepts, especially in compensation, uh, you can continue to watch. So basically, uh, in today's class, I want to cover some of the key um, HR slash compensation ratios that's really commonly seen in um, HR, uh, but uh, they might be confusing for someone who who's new to uh, this field or someone who's just curious to learn more about compensation. Um, so <clears throat> let me start to scope it a little bit. So here are some of those concepts that we hear a lot or use a lot in HR. Um, you hear compensation, uh, comp ratio, uh, range penetration, or like range spread, market index. And then in today's uh, tutorial, I'm going to basically uh, explain to you what they are and how they're different from each other. So <clears throat> to start with, uh, to start with, let me let me scope it out. So first, uh, you need to understand what uh, information those ratios are comparing Two. So uh, there's always three uh, parts of data sets that you would be comparing to each other. In the middle uh, is the core, which is basically the employee compensation. So it can be your salary, it can be your incentive, it can be your uh, total cash, uh, whatsoever. Uh, but then let's just define it as uh, salary uh, for this purpose. And then uh, if you are comparing with something internal, very likely you're comparing with the salary range or the salary structure as they call it. Um, so it is something that your organization define for yourself. And usually um, it includes a minim, uh, salary range minimum points, midpoints, um, and a max point. Uh, some companies can have like different ranges in between, uh, but for the majority of the organization I can uh, I can testify for you, it's um, those three points. Um, and um, um, if you if you want to graph it out, it will look something like this. So it will be like this floating bar chart, uh, which you can learn more from my playlist of HR analytics salary structure. Uh, but essentially, what you can see is like it's a increasing bar chart, and then you have the midpoint, uh, uh, minimum point, midpoint, and max. And then you can see all the um, employee information dots, and then that's how you can compare them with, like for example, compass, uh, comp ratio. And then another way you want to compare uh, employee data is against the market, which is the external information. So with the external market information, the most commonly seen are uh, the P50, the 50th percentile, or the median. Um, and uh, very likely you're comparing with market P25, which is 25th percentile or 75th percentile. Some companies also compare with P10, P90, or they have a minimum and max, depending on how you want to define your market. And some company even does not benchmark with P50. They can benchmark with P60, P65, or even like P45. So um, for that, um, I also you can also learn more about one uh, from one of my previous videos. So it's in the Excel chart for data visualization playlist. And then you can see like this is something typical. So you have the market data and then um, you can have the minimum market pay rate of like say 70. Uh, the P25 is somewhere here. Uh, P50 is 90. And then the market P70 or max is like 110. So that's how you can also visualize it with graphs um, in, um, uh, in Excel. So with this three parts of data sets, um, there comes this many uh, concepts, ratios. And let me explain to you one by one. So the first thing that you need to understand uh, is to um, well, let, let, you know, like, let's gi let me give you a numerical example so you can, um, you can make the calculation, you can have the calculation more clear. So let's say my employee salary is 100, like whatever it means, uh, and then my salary uh, range uh, mi uh, minimum is 80, uh, midpoint is 100, and then 
max is 120. It can really be anything that you define, but this is just what I define for my example. And then for the market rate, um, I define my market 25th to be 75, my uh, median to be 90, and my P75 to be 130. So, um, so with that, let's see how the ratio works. So the first thing I want to do is to compare my employee information with my internal uh, structure information. And that um, we have a couple options here. The most common thing is, of course, the compa ratio. Um, and the compa ratio is defined as your salary uh, divided by your midpoint, your range midpoint. So in our numerical example here is 100 divided by 100 and then therefore your comp ratio is 100. So depending on how your uh, salary ranges, like this comp ratio can usually uh, varies between 80% to 120%. And um, usually like in the market, de depends on how your company pays, like um, it can be as low as 50% to 150%. But then uh, if you have comp ratio, of like say 200%, that's probably outrageous. Like that, that means something is wrong and you need to fix it. Uh, and the second uh, concept is called range penetration. Um, it is essentially measuring the same thing, which is for example, the uh, your uh, position the employee's position in your range, it's just a different way to measure it. So range penetration is defined as the salary uh, minus your range mi mi minimum and then divided by basically the the full range, which is max uh, minus mid. So in my example here, it's going to be 100 minus 80, you get uh, 20, and then it's going to be, this part is going to be 120 minus uh 80, so you get 40. So your range penetration is 50. So this is actually a perfect range penetration. It means that your <clears throat> essentially, uh, if your range penetration is 50%, um, un unless you have a like asymmetric uh, range, that it usually it means that your comp ratio is 100%, which is like the perfect place that you want your employee to be. So for example, let's come back to this visual. So, um, see this dot let's say this is our employee and then you can see it's actually almost perfectly aligned with the midpoint this person's comparison is is going to be around 100 percent or very close to it and then the range penetration like you can see the range in the you can see its position in the full range is also about 50 percent it's like it's climbing up 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 until the 50 percent of the range and then if your range penetration is 100 percent that means that it's continuing to climb da, 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 until the max and then that means like you're paying the employee at the max. And of course, if your range penetration is over a max, uh, over 100%, that means you're paying employee max. So for example, that's a perfect example. This person's range penetration is gonna be over 100%. Um, and positioning range, that's something that you would um, also hear, uh, but definition wise, it's exactly the same as range penetration. I think some people just call it differently uh, so that they can compare one is position in range, and then another thing is position in market to market, which I will explain to you in a minute. So essentially, those two are the same thing for as far as I know. Um, Another concept is range spread. Um, and as you can see, this one has nothing to do with your employee. It, it doesn't matter what your employee is paid. Um, it's a, just a matter to basically evaluate your salary structure. So uh, this spread is defined as uh, the max minus mi uh, minimum and then divided by the minimum. So you get like say 50% from my example here. Um, and another thing that I want to also emphasize is that like when we design for salary structure, uh, you can also uh, test basically how your minimum and max is uh, with your range spread. So for example, for a range, if you know where you're anchoring for your minimum um, and you know what your range spread is, then you can basically use those two information to calculate your range max. It's basically derived from the same, uh, same formula. 
Um, so uh, this is something also helpful. Um, and I can tell you from my experience, like range spread of 50% seems to be the most prevalent uh, range spread, at least in North America. So it's not too narrow. It's not too wide. Um, of course, you can go narrow, like you can go to a like more step uh, structure, or you can go to a more broad structure. Like it's, there's no right or wrong. Uh, it's just whatever works best for your organization. Okay, so that is um, the most commonly seen uh, ratios that I've seen to compare your employee data and your range, uh, which is your seller structure. Uh, the next set is comparing your individual to your market. So um, it's relatively uh, less confusing, I would say. Like I, I've only seen two con uh, two ratios. One is called market index uh, one is called position to market which is actually when when i look at the definition like it's i i can say it's exactly the same as macro index it like depends on what market you're talking about like some other countries you might have some slightly different variation to this concept but essentially at the end of the day uh it's basically evaluating how your employee is paid compared to the market. And when we say compared to the market, uh, there's also one very important question, which is like which market rate are you co comparing against? Again, the majority of the co company um, organization would benchmark with the P50, which is the median of the market. There are companies, as I said, who wants to be more competitive. They will say, you know, well, I want to compare to the market P60. Um, there's also companies say, you know, well, like my this job is so hot for this job or actually for this top talent um, skill set, I'm going to compare to P75. That's totally OK. Again, like there's no right around. It's just a matter of how you define your compensation philosophy for your organization. So let's say in our example, let's say we're benchmarking with P50 in this example. So um, so market index is essentially defined as my salary uh, divided by my market P50, which in this case is 100 defined uh, divided by 90 and then you get 11 percent. So in this case, it means that we are paid more competitive, like competitively against the market. So again, let's come back to this uh, chart that I visualize it. So for example, um, let's say for this job, if uh, the market midpoint is 90 and then you pay someone nine, uh, at 100, that means that you are paying um, more competitive in the market. And then if you are to draw a scatter point chart, like your employee dot will be here, and then you know that it's above average. Yeah, so that is, uh, yeah, so the, those are the most commonly seen ratios that I've seen in the market. Uh, and um, I hope that by structuring it, by uh, uh, as classifying whether they're comparing with the structure internally or the market externally, it will help you to distinguish them uh, and make less confusion for it. Uh, the last point I want to make is that for salary range, um, as you can see in my example, my salary range is symmetrical. Um, and for the majority of the case that I've seen in real world, that is the case. Uh, but either theoretically or practically, um, I want to emphasize that it doesn't have to be like there's no right or wrong set of structure. It's whatever works best for your organization. So if for some organization, they were like, uh, you know what, we have a range here, but then we want to pay our top talents above the market and we want to have an actual space for them to be paid way above market. They may have a like in symmetric market uh, set of structure where uh, the low end is narrow and then the upper side is is broader and that's totally fine so as long as you can the seller structure is there not to restrict you from doing anything but like at the end of the day help you to attract and retain the best talent uh, to make contribution to your organization I think that is the best seller structure that should be used for your uh, for your organization okay so that is everything that I want to share with you today um, and I hope that it's helpful to you Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you like it. If you have any question, please leave me a comment and I will talk to you very soon.